everyone. Happy Saturday morning, afternoon, whatever. It's actually 12 o'clock here, but I know a lot of you West Coasters are probably just waking up for the morning. We're glad to be here with you on a Saturday, which is a little bit different for us, but we wanted to do a couple of things. One, we wanted to highlight our new Cricut Joy course, and two, we wanted to reach some people who ordinarily can't be live with us during the week when we normally go live. So we switched it up a little bit so that we could accommodate more people, more schedules, and hopefully uh, get a good group of friends here with us. If you are new to the channel, welcome. My name is Becca Oaks. I'm an owner and craft educator here at Oak and Lamb, and Miss Rachel Langston, the voice you will hear, is also an owner and craft educator here. And we love crafting, we love our community, we love this platform here on YouTube. We love to chat, so many things that we love, and we're glad that you're here with us. Um, we don't ordinarily do a whole lot with Cricut Joy. And the reason we don't do a whole lot with Cricut Joy is not a lot of people own Cricut Joys. If you are a Cricut or die cut crafter and you are, well, if you're a Cricut or die cut crafter, you generally have an Explorer or Maker Series machine. Um, but we've had so many people who found a Joy on a really good deal or they didn't know and they purchased the Joy as their primary only machine. And so the questions that we get a whole lot around here are, what can I make with my Cricut Joy? Because it's a small machine. The cut restrictions are four and a half inches in width by up to 20 feet long, depending on what materials you use. And so I think a lot of times our crafters, our viewers can't get past that small machine to figure out what to make with it. And our answer is always, well, you can make whatever you want to with it. Just think small. But, and small is in size, not like, you know what we mean. Not like narrow your, you know, narrow your mindset it's right just, the size just has to be a, a tad smaller uh, yes. you can get creative there's so many things you can do with a little machine like this but we've gotten these questions and these comments so frequently especially here recently and have noticed actually our number two video on youtube ever is a cricket joy video so we started looking at seo and search what people are searching and cricket joy was searched a whole lot so we realized that there was a need for this so we created a Cricut Joy course, which is exactly what you think it is. We do have an O&L Cricut Academy here at Oak and Lamb, which is everything you need to know in order to learn how to use your Explorer or Maker Series machines. We just launched this week our O&L Joy Cricut Academy, which is everything that you need to know to learn and use your Cricut Joy. This program, this course and the other course that I'm talking about are free to our flock members. So if you are a member here at Oak and Lamb, whether you're a monthly member, whether you're an annual member, because everything, everybody gets the exact same thing, no matter what tier they are here at Oak and Lamb, these courses are free to you. And in a little bit, I'm going to show you where to find those on the website. They're very easy to find. Actually, Rachel, let's go ahead and go over there. Okay. Um, We'll get this out of the way. Like I said, it is free and we are running a deal right now for craft month. March is craft month around everywhere. <laughs> around these everywhere. zero parts. And so we wanted to run a special deal for you all. If you use the code craft, C-R-A-F-T-Y, crafty, not craft. C-R-A-F-T-Y, then you get $40 off the annual membership, which gets you access to our entire library of cut files. You can see we have our cut files here. Um, I have a fun new surprise coming up in the next month where we are relocating our member-only content here on the website. I have it actually basically all finished. I just have to hit a button and add a couple more videos to it. So that's gonna be really exciting. You'll get access to those as members, and then you get access to these courses. So if you are a member, log into your account, Go to your dashboard and my courses. And then when that pops up, there are two different sections. One section is courses that you have purchased. So purchase, so courses that are not included in the membership, like our Craft with the Flock course or our Illustrator with the Flock course. So those will be right here. The, the courses that you have not purchased that are free to members will be right here where it says click for free member only courses. We're going to click that and you will see the O&L Cricut Academy and the O&L Cricut Joy Academy are right here. They're both right here. And as we grow, as we add things to our memberships, there will be more courses and more content here free for you all as well. 
So let's go ahead and hit get started. We're gonna open up the Cricut Joy Academy course and you can see right here all of the lessons that are included with this course. We do have a printable Joy handbook, which if you already have the Cricut handbook, it is very, very similar. You probably do not need to download it, but you can see right here if you click on it, ooh, not that, clicked the wrong thing. Let's go back. Right it's here okay. where it says, I love looking at the page. Right? <laughs> Joy Handbook. It's a PDF that you can download. You can save it to your desktop. You can save it to your tablet or your phone. You can print this out. And it's like having us in your pocket. This actually, we it, it's very interesting. I'm trying to figure out the wording for this, but I like the idea of saying that membership with the flock is like having craft educators in your pocket at all time. Not just us, but our community as well. So it's like we're always with you, right? You can always get online, uh, email us, get in the Facebook group and ask questions, ask for advice, seek just friendly conversation, whatever you want. So it's like, we're with you all the time. I love that. Anyway, you can have this in your pocket all the time too. And we have our design space actions. We have the terminology here that you'll need for the Cricut Join. And then we also have um, our hot space or our hot key guide. These are basically one button commands that you use in design space that make file manipulation and formatting really easy. We have mat guides here and then we have uh, what supplies and stuff like that. So we have that as available in the course for free as a download. And then you can see this is the list of titles that we have as well. So we do have our welcome. We talk about unboxing and setting up the Cricut Joy. We talk about a design space overview, which Rachel poured her heart and soul into. She has filmed this particular video like seven or eight times as design space updates and changes. And she has given you all of the great information that you need to know. So if you have never opened your Joy, if you've never opened a Cricut in general, and you know nothing about design space, which is the software that they use, that you will use with your Cricut, then this course is for you. It's gonna be great. In addition to that, she goes over an entire section of just Cricut Joy terminology. And then how to upload and uh, fonts and files, which is very, very important. And then I do an entire video, it's like a 40 minute video on supplies that you might need for Cricut Joy. And these are just ones that I recommend that you have in your craft room to you specifically with joy. I think that that was one of the more inspiring video. It sounds funny to say, yeah. but I think that that was one of the more inspiring videos because Becca as a cricket crafter and as a joy crafter as well, she, she's, she doesn't feel limited by her joy. So right. that supply list for you guys kind of allows you to say, Oh, well you can use all of this different stuff with my joy where when you picked it up at the store or the craft store, you might think that all you can make is cards or something. Right. And that's so not it's a case. really enlightening video because there are so many supplies you can use to create amazing things with your little joy. And Rachel Labor of loved it and listed all of the supplies in the description, primarily because in the video I said, Rachel's going to link all these for you. So she had to do it. <laughs> I was going to do it anyways, but I said, Becca, did you have to tell them? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> oh, I love it. Anyway, so we have the supply video and then we go into actual videos. We're making projects for one is how to use the smart vinyl. So there are smart materials and we go over all of that in the course. Um, but we actually do a smart vinyl project, which is, I have it over here. I should have brought everything over a, um, it's over on the table. If you want to grab all of those, then we can just show them the card and the tumbler. Thank you, Rachel. She's my Vanna White. Wasn't it you who didn't know who yes, Vanna White was? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So we make this height chart, which this file is an Oak and Lane file. It's on the website. And uh, we just go in very big detail how to make your cut so long, how to do a recurring cut or a repeating cut up to 20 feet. Because if you didn't know, Cricut Joy will do a cut that it, or a design that's four and a half inches wide by up to four feet. And then you can duplicate that up to 20 feet. So four feet four feet, four feet, four feet. So up to 20 feet. Yeah. Um, so we make this in the course. We now, you guys know that we love you because we don't love smart materials. No, I cussed and, the entire time and I did so that. so many people purchase yeah. them and we don't want to be like, let's ignore the people who yes. purchase smart uh -uh. materials. So Becca said, I want to teach them how to use smart materials because nine out of 10 times, if you grab your Cricut, you're going to go ahead and buy those smart materials. So, you know, we right. love you because we use them. Well, and sometimes they do bundles with them. That's and true. so why not use them if you have them? True. 
I did cuss a lot, did I yeah. not? Well, I mean, it not, looks okay. it's all, it's not. No, it looks very professional it. You when you see it. it. But yeah. it, it is, an, it's sometimes aggravating. But if you have it, we want to teach you how to use that. Yes, yes. Um, so the Cricut Smart Vinyl and then, I think I have it over here. I use the Cricut Joy Foil, foil Tip. Um, and make a little card, a little tag with that to show you how to do that. Then we go to just regular adhesive vinyl where we make this tumbler. And then we go to um, HTV Iron On where we make this guy right here. This is HTV on a canvasy type of notebook. So we talk about that. And then we go to, sorry, I'm having to actually look. We go to Cricut Joy Pins which is where we make this card. And this is sort of like a two, three in one actually, because we're using the pens and we're using a cutout card. So if you don't know how to use the cutout cards, that's a great video for that. Even if you don't have a joy, watch this because the cutout card, you can do cutout cards with your regular mat and, or your card mat and your Explore series machine or your maker series machine. And then the third part is that we use the Cricut card mat or the joy mat. So, and then the next video, it's just how to make a card with Cricut joy, where we design a card, use this. This is cardstock that we cut in that video. You don't have to use the actual cards that come in the boxes, the pre-made cards. And we talk about all of that. So that's a free course. All of that is a free course to members. So make sure you take advantage of that $40 off. Um, if you have questions about joy, this is great for you. Now, in today's live, we're going to just chat and have a wonderful time. And the title of the video is how to use Cricut Joy for beginners. That's what we're gonna do. We're gonna make several projects and just chat while we do it, answer your questions. We are going to make a hat with heat transfer vinyl. We're going to use heat transfer vinyl to make a custom little bunny that will be really cute. I'm going to make a cute little onesie. And then I'm probably, if we have enough time, going to make a stencil and paint on this mini charcuterie or cutting board to do that. So what do we want to start with? Do we want to start with the hat, the onesie, the bunny, or the stencil charcuterie board? Becca, which one are you most excited to make? Well, you know I love acrylic paint pens. So I'm a little bit happy about this one, which I said, if we have time. Oh, oh, so you wanted to do him last? No, I just, I don't know. You all let me know. I'm here for you, right? I'm, we're here for, which we are. I mean, we say it all the time. That's kind of the point of these lives is to answer questions. Because why else would you want to sit here and listen to me and Becca bicker at each other, which is how we just show love, you know, for about an hour. So <laughs> what do you guys want to know? These lives are great to... Ask all of your questions. Oh, they're talking about your youth. While you tell me what you want, I'm going to tell you a sad, sad, sad story. Well, you're the one that talked about Vanna White, and then Kat said something along the lines of, um, we can never fail to remind Rachel of her lack of knowledge. And I said, all of my shortcomings are always on display. Yes. Yeah. Well, they, yeah. In general, I am younger than most everyone watching. I understand that. I am not old by any means. I feel very youthful. I am happy to be 35, almost 36, because I feel like it's a really fun age. However, I was standing in, I told Rachel this, standing in the Starbucks line this morning, and I look at these adorable girls ordering their coffee, and they have on their Walter State softball outfits, and I'm like, ah, we could be friends. Like, they're adorable. I'm fun. We could be friends. We're like the same age. And then I'm like, <gasps> I could be their mom. Rachel's like, no, no, what is like? I'm like, years? I'm like no, I'm 18 years older than them. Mm. And it, it was sort of an eye opener. So I said, Rachel, I got to lose more weight. I got to get in shape. I got to start doing active fun stuff so that I can like feel young. Right. You know, like if they were to ask me to play softball, I would want to be able to be like, yeah, I can play softball. I can keep up with you. I, that's my motivation. What's your motivation? Okay. What are people saying here? Um, they either want the bunny okay. or the paint pen one. Okay. Let's do the bunny first, and then we'll do this one, and then we'll do the hat and the onesie. Sound good? Okay. And we have Auntie Nikki's craft room, and she says, you cannot do print the cut with the joy. Is that correct? Oh, that's a great question. Joy is not technically print the cut compatible. But we have a workaround for that. Rach will probably find that video for you, or you can search on our webpage or on our YouTube page, Cricut Joy Print and Cut. And, but Rachel's already done it for you. 
a fun workaround. We have lots of people who really love that. I made these stickers. Which we have never taken off because the it's mat. just so impressive right like i'll never take this off no, it, no. it needs to be framed yes. obviously yes. maybe i'll sign it sure yeah. oh please it was our first video to hit a hundred thousand it's true it will never happen that this gets thrown away no never uh -uh. and it will probably come in and do it to us <laughs> anyway these right here these stickers were made on this cricket joy watch the video you'll be shocked um anyway yeah the hack yeah 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 we're gonna start with the little um, bunny. The little bunny, and I'm gonna go ahead and measure its ear because I need to find out how big this needs to be. So it's now look at this little bunny. I have it on the overhead. I mean, it's adorable. Becca found this little bunny at Walmart. Of it's course, like it's three forty-eight or something, and it's so he's soft. He's like the soft because see, and it, they're fine. But like the hot pink bunnies, and I like that this is a neutral Me bunny too. He's really cute. I'm gonna make it about an inch and a quarter by. We'll say three inches. Does Charlie need this bunny? Does it need to have his name in it? Whatever you want it to be. Does, does Busted Can of Biscuits not need a bunny? Busted Can of Biscuits won't fit really good right here in this ear. Oh. Busted Can of Biscuits. Well, That'll be hard. Do you put what Bathroom you Baby doesn't really fit Bathroom either. Bathroom Baby doesn't fit either. Yeah. Charlie it is. Okay. Okay. So let me ask you all this. When you do these, I, I just want to know what your preference is. Do you write the name so that it reads this way or would you write the name so it's like c-h-a-r-l-i-e you do it like this right that's what i would do i'm just asking what do you all do yeah that, know. yeah okay everybody's because it's funny the preferences yeah it people is have it's just design preference yeah so over in design space one thing that i want to do very first is grab is, is this showing by the way it is okay. Up here, where it says Maker 3, I am going to be using a Joy, so I need to go ahead and select Joy. And then I have, this is what I'm using. The Let's Eat is going to be on my charcuterie board. We'll put that over to the side. We won't do it right now. Um, just grab the text box, and I'm going to write in Charlie. Oh, I do like the lowercase. I might leave it lowercase. That's cute. And then I want to decrease the letter spacing just a little bit because I'm working with such a small area. I don't want to waste a bunch of space. But when I do that, there's a couple of things that are interesting. Um, these look pretty good right here, but the R and the L are really close together. So sometimes even using the auto letter spacing. What? And ladies and gentlemen, this is what happens when you create cut files. Um, that this doesn't drive Rachel that crazy, but it drives me is, crazy. Wow, I mean, tip top of my list. <laughs> what? So I'm going to ungroup, and I'm just going to move this over just a hair because it drives me crazy. I, you did nothing. I did. I did. <laughs> <sighs> whatever. Do whatever you want to do. Then I'm going to group this back together and to group this back together, I can press command G, which is a hotkey. And that command is also on our heart hotkey guide. And then I want to make sure that this is sized well. So I said it was like three inches in width. Let's see what that makes the height. 0.75. And I wanted it more like point or 1.25. So let's see what happens to this particular font. If we unlock the size lock ratio and just drag it a little bit and make it a little bit taller. That doesn't look terrible. No, looks completely natural. Yes, it gets bad when it when it's warped to where you cannot like see what you know. You'll know if you've warped it too much. Right. The other option is to use the uppercase like this. Rach, does this bother you that the R and the L are together? Yes. Okay, just making sure. So let's let's look at both of these right next to each other and see what we like better. Sorry, I'm being picky. Group that together. We'll make this three inches in width. Nope, three. And, oh, that makes the height even smaller. Okay, so the other one is a better option because if we made this one like this, that looks terrible. Uh, but you see what we mean? This is actually yeah. a really good example. Yes. That's way, it's, no. It's ridiculous. Yeah. We're going with this one. Okay. Um, I happen to love all lowercase. I love the way it looks, especially for kids. I love the way that all lowercase it's looks. More, it's more kid-like, isn't yeah. it? We're youthful. Yes. You know, you're so youthful. You're so I, young. So I am. You need something like that. I am. 
Okay, so I'm trying to debate if I should go ahead. I'm gonna do this one. We'll do all of these separate. I was gonna just cut everything out, but I don't wanna confuse anyone. So we're just gonna do four separate projects. We're gonna go ahead and click make it. And when I do that, look what happens. All uh, my letters. Maybe I should change his name to that. Ilkayeri. And why is this? Do we have any newbies here? I, I do want to know that because I'm trying to decide how to teach this. Like if let I need know. to teach super, super yeah, let us know newbie, if this which is your I first am time very here. excited to do. First it's of my all, favorite thing. First of all, we would like to shout you out if you are <sighs> first time newbie. Let us know. Miss Emily says, Will this live be safe for us to watch back? Yes, Miss Emily, will it be. will. Now, again, the what we're doing today while we're here on a Saturday is to let you guys know you can get a Cricket Joy course with us, which is going to be not not really much like this live it's gonna be way more slowed down way more uh intentionally teaching you from like basic you just open and your no machine. chatter it's literally no chatter. just education exactly so yes. that's kind of that that's what you want is mm -hmm. our amazing course now you we are having a killer sale on our membership because the course is included in that for free so click the link down below if you would like to join that yes. Ms. emily but thanks for asking so the reason that that went all over the mat is because i did not attach or weld it so that's two options I'm gonna just go ahead and press attach it, which basically paper clips it all together. And now when I click make it, look what happens. It's all together like Adorable. it's supposed to be. So let me turn my Cricut Joy on. One you of my complaints. Press? Oh no, your Cricut Joy, you were right. Yeah. I also need my easy pressure, right? Uh, one of my complaints about Cricut Joy is that it does not have a power button. And so yeah. I'm never really sure if it's on or not, but I just unplugged it, plugged it back in. The light comes on, it makes the fun noises. Um, and I need to make sure that I have connected to this machine because you can only connect via Bluetooth, right? You can't take the cord and plug it in, which is a little frustrating. So you do have to have Bluetooth capability, but it's fine. And to check that, I am on a Mac. A Mac so I'm just gonna come up here and go to Bluetooth. Make sure that I'm already connected. We have two joys and I can never remember which one is which. I think I marked the bottom of it. <laughs> <laughs> this is the one since it's showing up let's go ahead and click it we're connected to it now let's press continue and we're going to select that Cricut Joy connect to it and while that is going on I am going to grab some heat transfer vinyl here and cut it down These types of projects are great projects for scraps. I think Cricut Joy products and projects in general are great for scraps, but these are really good. Now, when I'm putting my HTV on my mat, I wanna make sure that I am doing it with the shiny side down because the shiny side is the transfer or carrier sheet. So let's place it right here and I'm going to bray my material down so that it doesn't move on me. And then you can see right here, are you overhead, Rachel? Okay, thank you. You can see right here that there's some overhang and I don't, I, I can't leave that in there or it won't go in my machine correctly. So I'm just gonna cut that off with this tree control knife and it is perfectly fine and safe for your mat to do that on your mat. After all, you are putting it in a machine that has a knife blade that will be cutting on it. So this is ready. Now let's go back over to our design space menu and we're going to choose everyday iron on as our material setting. And when we do that, it throws up a caution or reminder that says, make sure that your mirror is turned on and iron on material is face shiny side down. So all of those reminders are there for you, for those of you who are new and might forget it, or for those of you who have done it so long, it's sort of just second nature and you just forget about it. It. Sometimes I'm like, oh, I haven't remembered to, to, to mirror. Um, and so to mirror, what I'm gonna do is press edit right here. And then I can click this little toggle. And the reason that we want to mirror is because we've placed our material so that the back of the heat transfer vinyl, this is what's actually gonna touch the bunny. So this is what, if, if we didn't mirror it, then when we flip this to put it on the bunny, it's gonna be backward. So now we're gonna press done. And then you can see this button right here, or this light right here is flashing. When that is flashing, you know that your mat is ready to go ahead and load. So to load it, it's really easy. You just place it in here. It's going to pull the mat in and measure it. 
And then um, I kind of wish that the Explorer machine and the Maker machine did that automatically instead of having to lo load unload Same. the button, right? Same. Yeah. So back over in Design Space, once the mat has been measured, you can go ahead and click Go because there is again no button on the actual machine to do that with. And then it's going to go ahead and cut the heat transfer vinyl. While that is cutting, I'm going to go ahead and preheat my little tiny mini Easy Press to the second second temperature setting, which is somewhere around 320, 325 degrees. And you might be asking yourself, is she going to use the hat press for that hat? And my answer is, if I can coax Rachel into coming up here and doing it for me, then we will grab that heat press out. I wish I had a camera on me right now. I, I really wish we did. I too. really wish that I did. Okay, so it's finished. That was really quick, right? So in design space, this thing pops up that says complete, rerun or upload. So if you had a material like craft board or something like that, that you were cutting craft board, there's no actual setting for it in your Cricut Joy, but you can still cut it. One way that I do it, I just do it on heavy cardstock and it cuts it three times and it does fine. But if I had run it through there three times and it hadn't cut, then this is when I would go and press rerun instead of unloading my mat. If I unload my mat and then put it back in to try to rerun it, it's probably not going to line up like it's supposed to. But I can at this point press rerun, have it recut it, and it will cut it perfectly. So this is where we press unload. We'll unload our mat, and then we're just going to go ahead and weed this with our favorite fun weeding tool, weeding on the mat. So let's weed off the excess first. Just like this. I always love to watch people weed heat transfer vinyl for the first time because they feel like it's very delicate. Mm -hmm. You can rip this stuff, man, and it like in a good way. Like yeah. be rough with it. Be I love HGV. rough with it. Pull that off and now I'm going to grab somewhere this mini heat press mat and this little guy right here and we're going to place this just on its ear and the cool thing about heat transfer vinyl is that I can place this pull it up place it pull it up place it and as many times as I want to and it's not going to hurt anything it's lovely now you pretty much cannot do that with regular uh, vinyl. adhesive vinyl, Correct. which is why it's kind of so relaxing and freeing because there's not as many, you know, like you, you can, like Becca said, reposition it as many times as you need to. For a good probably year and a half, I used heat transfer vinyl on every single thing I could for a couple of reasons. One, it weeds so much easier, especially if you are working with um, super like detailed mm -hmm. cuts mm -hmm. it weeds a whole lot. sorry i'm gonna have to hover over this with my head so i can make this sure it's gonna be adorable though God. um it weeds really easily you don't have to transfer it because it comes on this handy dandy included transfer sheet and then placing it is so much easier because you have a thousand chances to get it right so <laughs> i did now I, I do love regular vinyl too so don't be scared of vinyl, but I feel like heat transfer vinyl is just really easy to work with in the in the very beginning. So I have this, um, I'm just gonna go ahead and put some heat on here. I can move it, I can't move it around too much just because of the placement of it, but I'm just gonna apply some heat here. I can't I think, if I want. And I think Becca has mentioned it too, but it, it really, really matters what brand of material that you get. That can really make or break the yes. project going smoothly or not going smoothly. We do talk about that a lot in the course about um, which, which brands you should get and the differences between them. And, uh, there's a, especially with regular adhesive vinyl, it can be a bit finicky. So of course, through our years of, of working with it, we've developed a lot of little tips and tricks to pretty much make sure it goes smooth sailing every time. Well, but to kind of piggyback on that, I'm going to go ahead and remove this while it's warm. If for some reason I had pulled that up and parts of it weren't laid down nicely, then I can just place that back on there, apply more heat and, and go with it. If I throw this away and can't find it or something like that, I can grab a Teflon sheet, place it down and, and reapply heat. But look how easy that was. So cute. Super stinking cute. I love that. Um, but to kind of go back on, on what Rachel was saying about good products and stuff like that, I think one disadvantage, and I love Cricut. I'm not bashing Cricut. I do love Cricut. I think they've done a great thing. I think overall their machines are, from what I've experienced, 
the best of the die cut machine world. Um, I think there's always room improvement no matter what brain you have, but I do not like their smart materials. And so I don't love that they offer bundles and things like that for new machines because I feel like people like I did think, okay, Cricut machine the materials are probably the best of the best. Let's use these. And then they get in the middle of it and they're hard to weed or hard to cut or hard to transfer. And they get discouraged because those materials are not super user friendly. And so I want to encourage you if you bought a bundle, don't throw that stuff away, but don't be discouraged if you don't really love how it cuts or transfers or anything like that. Um, I think with time and with experience that you can easily use those materials. So it's not going to be like a waste, but I would encourage you to find some more user friendly materials, which is why we're here at Oakenland. We love to test out things for you, tell you all about them, show you our, our trials, our, our, uh, Trial and errors. Yeah. Um, show you the success, the successes, tell you why we don't like things and, and whatnot. And I, I told everyone this on a live, I think earlier this week, but the reason why we create things like this and we're so passionate about it is because we want to give you all the things we wish we had when we first started out yep. and was completely clueless learning on our own, wasting money, wasting time, all the above. Yep. We want to make sure that you're not doing that. And we want to give you the confidence to ju just succeed because we wish that we had a cricket joy course. We wish that we had a regular cricket course. We wish we had the cricket a community joy yeah. to be able to ask questions to and not feel stupid to ask them. You know, like that's what we wanted to do. So that's why we made Oak and Lamb. Right. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay. Now we're going to do the fun charcuterie board. So let's measure it really quickly. I'm going to just measure right here. Um, we're looking at roughly three and a half. It's a little bit more than three and a half by four. Don't do it. Don't do it. Okay. Four and three quarters. <gasps> Watch your mouth. Did I say? No, I've messed it up. Three and a half by four and three quarters. Okay. Oh. So let's go back over to design space and we're going to grab a basic shape so that we can put those measurements in. 3.5, unlock that size lock ratio, four and three quarters. I said four and a quarter, but I'm at four and three quarters. Um, we'll delete that. So this is a representation of the cutting board area that we're going to be using. And since we're using a stencil, I'm just gonna leave this as is. And I'm going to grab this that I've already created pull it over here and I'm going to bring it to the front because right now it's behind this layer to bring it to the front. I'm going to right click, bring to front and I can change the color of this if I want to, so that I can see what I'm doing a little bit better. And I'm just going to drag and place it here and we can kind of contort it if we want to make it a little bigger, do whatever we want with this. Is this a file or did you use? No, I just use it. It's Coco goose font. Uh, but I think it's really cute. That looks really good. And then we can do a couple of things because this is going to be a stencil and I'm going to want this part to be cut out. I could select both layers, come to combine and press subtract so that it just deletes itself. Basically it's like a cookie cutter or I can select both press attach. It's just going to cut that out. Whatever you want to do. No one way is not better than the other. Um, but let's go ahead and click make it. That's all we have to do to prep this easy, make it see this on our mat here. We'll press continue. We're going to connect again to our machine and then we're going to select, um, they, I can never remember what the actual premium vinyl premium vinyl. Again, I'm just going to put this piece. I'm hoping I have enough. I'm going to move it over a little bit. I'm going to cheat over just a tiny bit. It's three and a half. This isn't enough. You can use an, I'd, I'm just yeah. going to get a big piece. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't matter because the, there's like excess stencil, but uh, I want it to line up perfectly so that it's even and all yeah. that fun stuff. We can use that scrap later. We can. So I'm going to grab this Starcraft vinyl. And just cut a four four inch piece. And for those of you, anybody wondering, uh, we think that Starcraft, um, it's it's called Starcraft Premium HD Permanent Vinyl. What a mouthful! Yeah. Uh, and then Orcal 651 are incredibly comparable. Now, I yeah. When we started, we used Orcal. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. It was a 
great, great vinyl. Uh, I just sent our friend Emily a link to the Starcraft from nice. 143 because the honestly, there's 64 color options. The prices are great. Shipping is super quick. Um, we, That's, we love it. Actually, one of the things that I talk about in the supply mm -hmm. list for Cricut Joy, they have these amazing samples. I got it to you. Well, color, go whatever. Yeah. yeah. Color samples. Um, and we keep them here in the studio. They they have the HTV samples, the regular vinyl samples, and it's just really easy to say, okay, this is the color I need because on online you can't tell as easily. No. Or we have purchased the vinyl forever ago, need to buy another piece and can't remember what the color is so we can match it up and make sure that we're ordering the correct thing. Uh, but, yeah, it's great vinyl. Rachel we use those swatches correct. all the time. All the time. They're great. Yeah. Love them. Okay, so this is gonna cut out. Let me go ahead and grab um, the acrylic markers I'm using today. I am using Primrose acrylic markers. I haven't used them on a live yet, but I have used them. The colors are gorgeous. Miss Beth told us about them and I'm obsessed with them. But we also have some other acrylic markers that we have used. Um, these are just fun colors. I only recently got into acrylic markers. I'm a terrible painter and this makes me not as bad of a painter. So that's a win. While that's cutting out, let me go ahead and grab a transfer sheet so that I can transfer this vinyl over. And this is a clear transfer paper, tra transfer tape, which will make it easier to line up and make sure that everything is nice and even. We got this roll when we opened the studio, which was almost 18 months ago now, right? And uh, there's still a ton of it. A yeah. ton of it. Actually, we, we have two lot. rolls. I don't know where the other one is, but... Okay. This is finished cutting, so let's unload our mat. I'm going to link them those uh, prim primrosia. Yes, primrosa. yes. Uh, do you, is that both of the sets in that There's cup? two sets, Okay, yeah. just making sure. Yep. Um, I'm going to grab my brayer, which is like a squeegee type thing, and I'm going to just... I keep calling it a brayer. It's not a brayer. It's a burnisher. I think I did that a lot in the course potato, too. Potato, potato, yeah. honestly. Anyway, I'm squeegeeing that to just make sure that turn, or weeding this is even easier. I'm going to grab my favorite weeding tool again, weed off this excess, which is around, and then the inside. So we're going to weed this, the letters, because we're making a stencil. Now, if I wanted to, I could just put vinyl on this here, which would mean I would take these letters instead and put them on and call it a day but I wanted to do all kinds of fun colors on this and so a stencil is going to be a really fun way to do that and then I could like poly over it or something like that to give it a really nice finish you could even put resin on top of this when you're finished um, if you wanted to make like a decor piece or something like that the center of my A came up let me make sure it's good okay now I'm just going to put this transfer sheet on here. Grab my squeegee here. Transfer that down. And then we'll flip over and remove our mat from our vinyl so that it doesn't curl up. Sometimes if you do it the other way, then this backing wants to curl. And what it will do is pick up some of the pieces so that when you have to lay them back down, it kind of moves it a little bit. So that's why it's so important to do it the way that I did, remove the mat from the actual vinyl. And that's even more important on larger pieces of vinyl. Um, smaller ones you don't have as much of a problem with. So let's go ahead and remove this backing. And again, kind of like that don't curl it up we in in the course we just give you guys all of those little tips and tricks yep. the the things that you won't really find just everywhere that can really make a difference for you guys starting out and i'm going to give you another tip here because this is pretty easy to just hover over and lay that down this isn't as pertinent but if this were not that easy then what you could do is take this backing here and place it back on right here with just a little bit of this vinyl showing. And then what I would do is place this on here, like this. Once I like the placement of it, then I would push this part down so that it doesn't move and then remove that backing. And that's a really good way to, to easily line things up. The reason that that is important is if I'm laying this like this and accidentally, again, on bigger pieces, it's, it's more difficult, but if I'm, 
hovering over and part of it accidentally lays down, depending on the material, you may not get that thing back up. So let's lay this down here. I'm kind of a freak when it comes to placement. I mean, I think you should be. Placement, uh, I mean, it, it can kind of make the difference between a project looking beginner and professional. Correct. You know. Okay, so now I'm just going to burnish this down so that my stencil stays really well. I definitely don't want any of this stencil to come up because the paint could go under and ruin these really nice crisp edges that I am hoping to achieve. This does not seem like it wants to stick really well. It makes me wonder if there is a coating on here that's going to give me a problem. But we're going to see. I'm just going to smooth this back down. Let me grab a brayer here. Bray it down. And basically, she's just pushing all of that. Because just think of it like a sticker. It's yeah. just like a sticker. And we're wanting that sticker to have a really good uh, bond with our blank. Yeah. And wood is especially bad for... Uh, bleeding underneath stencils. Yes. So that's why it's really important to push down hard on that vinyl. Okay, now I'm just going to kind of choose the colors I have. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So nine colors. Let's pick out nine colors. This one for sure, because it's like my favorite. This one will be pretty. Um, we'll do a pink, the mustard. Did I now, say nine? Now the, I, didn't, I, don't, I wasn't paying attention. I'm sorry. It's okay. This would be a really fun reason for those of you at home who have them to get out your color color cubes, cubes. Yeah. yes for those of you who don't know color cubes this is a color cube and it has all sorts of color palettes in it oh i, don't, I, I, I love these look, oh my gosh look at that one that is gorgeous it just helps with color pairing and stuff like that we have a whole video on that i'm not going to really go into it but um check them out they're phenomenal we have so many members who love them but, um, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay. Uh, I, like, I'm going to use all the greens because I love green so much. That's fun. And Auntie Nikki's Craft Room, these little boards were from Hobby Lobby, like, two years ago in the they fall. They have them every spring, though. Yeah. Oh, in the spring? Yeah. I thought it was in the fall. Well, probably both. But go check them out. Eight. I'm sure you can probably find some on Amazon. Okay, what's my ninth color? These are my, these are eight. What's my ninth color? Orange? Coral orange? Yeah, perfect. Let's go. So let's start here. This one hasn't been used yet. You're going to just want to shake it up a little bit. It does have a like a applicator or a shaker in it. You're going to hear it. If you don't hear it, then keep shaking until you do. You want to shake all of that up. And then if it hasn't primed yet, then it's going to be a white tip. To prime it, you're just going to push on a piece of scrap paper or something like that until the paint starts flowing. It's pretty quickly. And then this is like an ink pen with paint in it now. It's super, super easy to paint with. So I'm just going to paint. And then we'll remove this stencil in a little bit. And hopefully it goes really well. Again, I'm a little concerned about the coating that's on this and the stencil not adhering super well. Um, but that's why we're here, so that we can ruin ours and you don't have to. Um, Jen said she got her color cubes this week. Jen, do you love them? They're so pretty. They, I mean, she put her heart and soul, Sarah did, into creating such an amazing tool. And you can see that there was a lot of hard work that went into yeah. that. Yeah, and I mean, it's not even... I don't know if it's even marketed for crafting, but like interior design type of things, but you can use them for anything. Yeah. I love it. Um, having trouble deciding here. Shake it up, shake it up. How many friends do we have here this morning? We have right now 91 amazing, amazing. friends. Amazing. Uh-oh. I only what? see 49 likes, people. <gasps> oh, no. Help us out. Do we, did we have any newbies that we needed to call out? Miss Emily, who has been asking phenomenal questions this entire life. Welcome. She is new. Let us know if there's any uh, any more people who are new and maybe don't really like to comment. Yeah, and comment thank you and we'll for your out. awesome questions. Seriously, it helps us so much because we do this so often that a lot of times we just assume people know things mm -hmm. and forget that we were there and knew nothing. Um, and so we love we love all sorts of questions. Yeah. Thank you for participating in that way. 
Rich, what are you doing this weekend? Let me think. I don't really, I don't have any plans, you know? No, that's your favorite kind of weekend. It, it, yeah, it's true. Now, you've got some plans today. I do. Becca's going to a trampoline park. Yes. Yeah. Uh, also, my sister got me into a pair of jeans last night, which for those of you who know me know that that is like unheard of. I've literally texted Rachel and said, Rachel, I feel like I need to confess to you. And she was like, oh, God, what? I said, I have a pair of jeans on and I actually like them. So all of that to say, I'm going to try to find this pair of jeans that Anna let me wear last night. I don't want to talk about it. I know. I feel bad. I really do. I've been such a warrior for anti-jeans because, and, and, and let's be clear, I still don't love jeans. These are not normal jeans. They're like buckle and they're like super stretchy and amazing. And I didn't feel like I was wearing jeans. I hate jeans that like cut me in the middle and can't sit down because they're so stiff or my butt hangs out of them. You know, like in general, I'm a legging fan. And guys, I have posted the link to those amazing color cubes. Uh, Amy, Flock Talk is absolutely coming back. With this replaced Flock Talk today, but we will have it just as normal next week. Do not fret. We already have a gem of one planned for you next we week. We do. Yeah. It's going to be great. You're We're going, going in the double it. digits. That's our 10th Flock Talk. It doesn't feel like we've done 10. Um, Rolo is here. Their first live. Welcome. They Welcome. Say, do you need to seal the paint on the board later? Maybe. Especially because it has this weird coating on it. And then Miss Miss Beverly, she is here. It's her very first live. Welcome, Miss Beverly. Beverly. We're so glad that you're here. I love this group that we have today. Sorry, I don't know. Some of you might find this relaxing just watching me paint this. Some of you might find it boring. So I feel like I should tell you a joke, even though I'm a really bad comedian. Oh, please. Do you have one in I mind? Don't, I don't have one, Rachel. Oh, no. I don't. All of mine are inappropriate. Uh, now, I have good jokes, but for some reason, when I'm on the fly, when someone stresses me out, all I can think of is the inappropriate ones. I'm not going to do that to you all. I'm more of a funny in the moment type of person. So and, is my sister. And not like... I can't do that. No, I can't either. No. Oh, I've unplugged something. That's fine. Uh, Kat said, are you actually going to display that somewhere, Becca, or sand it down and reuse it? Well, I got to be honest, Kat. It would probably just go in the trash can before I sanded it down and reused it. We have about 40 of these. Yeah. I got them for stupid cheap. I don't know. I, I can't say, Kat. I don't know. Becca, Stacy said, be jealous, Becca. I'm leaving Sunday for my second camping trip of the year already. I'm not jealous. Did you all see her face up there? Because I, I can say it from here. I can, I can smell the jealousy coming off of Becca. I'm not the jealous type. Fallon was here the other day, and she said, Mom, I'm ready to go camping now. And Becca said, yeah, me too. <laughs> We're, I'm sorry, I'm sitting here trying to figure out what color order I want to do here. Uh, we are going camping not next Wednesday, but the next Wednesday. The kids are on spring break, mm -hmm. so that's exciting. Um and we're going with Alan and Lisa. Several of you have met Alan and Lisa. And Anna and Mark are going. We're going to Fall Creek Falls. I'm really excited. I haven't been there, I guess, since I was a kid. Oh, that'll be fun. Yeah. I'll probably do a live from there. Beth That's said, bad. we want to hear more kiddo stories. How are the O&L kiddos? I have to tell one about Charlie. I yeah. haven't told Becca yet. Uh, so yesterday, I was putting up Charlie's clothes. I wash his clothes once a week. Um he doesn't accumulate that many clothes, but they definitely well, and they're tiny. Washed. Yeah. So when I do wash them, it's been all the clothes for all week. So maybe like two outfits a day, you know, every sleepers at night, all that good stuff. Um, so I was putting it up in his room, and he Charlie roams. I've tried my best to not contain him in the house and kind of let him roam and just teach just him, teach him what yeah, he should teach him yeah. right from wrong of what he should be into and not into, yeah. so he can have some more independence. I'm the same way, and I don't have to throw him in like a. Not a cage, because I have one in my living room. Trust me, it's very handy. But not have to put him in something to go use the restroom or make dinner, whatever. He can just roam. So it gets quiet. Well, you all know, as parents, quiet is bad. It's quiet good. means bad. So I ignored it for a few minutes before I realized, oh, he's being, being quiet. So right outside of his door is the food and water bowl for Lenny. Well, that is the one thing Charlie will not mind, and he will not obey 
to, to stay away from. He puts the food in his mouth. He sticks his hand in the water bowl. He thinks it is just like a water park. He loves it over there. So I'm constantly getting on him about that. That's the one thing he will not budge on. He will not listen. So I'm putting up his clothes, and I, I remember that it's quiet, and I was like, oh, no. So I, I step to the side. I mean, he's two feet away from me just over a wall, and he has put one of his battery-powered uh, toys into the water bowl. There's two passies in the water bowl, and he's sitting there crisscross applesauce looking up at me grinning. He is so happy about it. Well, I picked up the toy because all I want to do right now is just kind of clean up the mess, you know? So I pick up the toy and water just pours from it. So I have to throw it in the trash can, <laughs> and Charlie knows that I'm upset. He he takes off running, Becca, running into the living room, and I'm like, you know what? You know what? Let me just clean this mess up first. Before he runs, though, he picks up a passy from the nasty dog's water bowl and sticks it in his mouth. Of course he does. Naturally. And starts running away from me. And I throw the toy in the trash can because, I mean, that's toast. It had batteries and all kinds of stuff in it. Well, Becca, the rest of the day, it's making noises in the trash can because it was shorted out. <laughs> oh, my Lord. It was something. Oh, Char. And he's only 11 months old. Like, I cannot not even come close to imagining the mischief he's going to get into in, like, a year. Yeah. I just can't. Um, the bane of Sam's existence in our home is Cecil, the plant, right? So, if it gets quiet, then you know that Sam is playing in the dirt of Cecil. Poor Cecil. I don't know how he's making it Poor to Cecil. be thousand percent honest. I mean, mm. first of all, the fact that he's endured it all, being my plant, is just a miracle. Um, second of all... Toddler hands and spit and all that fun stuff. I I don't know. It's an interesting one. Um, my son, I, he goes to a private Christian school, right? <laughs> He's, uh, Beckett is really good for that Christian school. He's really good. You know, he keeps them on their toes and reminds them often that they need Jesus, um, in that they need Jesus in order to deal with Beckett. Mm -hmm. He's a great kid. He um, is just an interesting kid. So I pick him up and his teacher's doing car riders and all that fun stuff. And she said, I have to roll down the window. I'm like, oh, God. She's like, um, Beckett clipped down today. I'm like, oh, hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. what happened? Now, clip down, that means what? Um, he basically, they start out on this, like, ready to learn. And if he clips down, it's because he's done something, like, not great. It's like pulling a card. Like, like, like do better. Yeah. 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 He doesn't often clip down. And I was like, what do he do? She said, well, you know, he was walking up the steps and he said, oh, shit. And I was like. Oh, Beckett said that? Yeah. <gasps> oh, gosh. I got to. At, at his Christian school. And I, I just, I, I just. Oh, my God. I just closed my mouth and smiled a little bit and looked at her and I said, I really don't know what to say. He heard that from me. You know, it's Full not, responsibility yeah. taken. I was 100%. like, did he use it in context? She was like, yeah. And I was like, I've got to be honest. He didn't need to say that, but I'm not really mad about it. And she's laughing. Yeah, of course, She yeah. thinks it's hysterical. Yeah. And she says to him, at first, he, uh, she says, Beckett, what did you say? And he's like, I said, oh, goodness. Oh no! Oh whatever! And she was like, "No, Beckett, what did you say?" And he said, "I said, oh shit!" And, he, and she <laughs> said, "She said, and where did you hear that?" He said, "I heard it at home, and I know it's not, or I'm no, I'm not supposed to say it." It's like, okay, okay, don't kick us out. Yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Bex, heart Bex. It's, you know, you know. Okay. Okay, we've got two questions. Let's hear Marty, it. Marty, why is it the design space It's not compatible with my Acer Chromebook? I did not realize that when I purchased my Cricut Explorer, I had to get a separate laptop with Windows. So that is correct. Uh, design space is only, um, it, it requires a Windows or Mac operating system. Uh, that's just kind of, yeah. It, I mean, it is what it is. I wish I could tell you, like, you know, why it does that. I think it has something to do with, you know, Chromebook since it, of course, runs on Google's operating system. It's just not compatible. Her with Acer, space. what is it? A computer? It's a Chromebook. It's if you yeah. look, kids use them for college. Yeah, you could probably run a virtual machine on it. Maybe and, like that. Has, that is either Windows based or Safari or um, OS based. 
And then Miss Jenny said, I was wondering how you would recommend to store a Cricut Joy if you took it camping. Um, I do not have the box anymore that it came in. I just put mine in a bog bag and go with it. Yeah. You could get, you could go to the dollar store or like five below and get one of those little, those little nice looking totes and put all your craft stuff in a little tote that could, yep. you know, sit under the table while you're driving or something like that. Yeah. I have one of those bog bags, the larger bog bags. And I just, I put like everything in it. I have two. I have one that has all the swim stuff in it. And then one that has like our medicines and hats and cameras and all that stuff. And I just throw the joy down in there with it. Um, or I have like one of those milk crates. We don't have one here, do we? They're all at home. I have one of those milk crates and I just put all of the, um, like vinyls and things like that for it in it. Love it. I love my bog bag. Becca got me one for, was it my birthday? I think it was your birthday. Or Christmas. I think it was my I birthday. Know, I think it was your birthday. Um, I use that thing all the time. All the time. Yeah, I love bog bags too. We have two large and three small ones in our home because we just use them all the time. The kids have their own camping one that they put their stuff in. And Okay. This is fun. I think it's finished. I love the colors. I do too. I did have to go back and do another coat on these three because they were thinner. Like the lighter colors need another coat. Um, but let's go ahead and remove this. You don't have to let it dry. You can just go ahead and remove the stencil. Hopefully it did not leak. It bled a little bit. Oh my But not gosh. terrible. It bled a little How bit up cute. here on the E. I don't see it. I cannot see it. But that's how easy it is to use your Cricut Joy for a stencil. Look at that. How fun is that? Love the colors. I do too. So stinking cute. Now, again, if you, if you, you're probably going to hang this on the wall is what I would assume. So yeah, or put it like in a tray or like something like that. Like a spray poly or yeah. leave it as is or do a little coat of decoupage. It's something if you wanted to seal it, you could, but you do not have to. Okay, next we're going to make a hat and we're going to make a shirt. So... Let's go ahead and over and design. Well, are there any questions about anything before I move on? Uh, there is a question from Miss Penny. Let's she hear said, it. She uh, said, how do you know what size a cut file should be when they often come at, at crazy sizes when you import them into design space? No, that's a great question. Um, and I'm, I actually can show you with this next project. What I do, well, much like I did with this, exactly like I did with this, I measured my surface area that I had and then back over in design space. If you want to go over there, I'll show you. Um, I don't know if you were here for this or not, but I like to pull in a blank shape and size it to that surface area. So, um, if I'm using a, uh, I don't know, Oh, for instance, I did, me and Beckett made a history project, right? And we did it on a poster board. And I don't remember the exact dimensions of the poster board. They're like 23 inches by 32 or something. But we're going to say that. So what I do is size this blank to my blank size. So we'll say it's 23 by, what would be 32 by 23. And then I can use this blank to size everything now. Um, much like I did with this cutting board, I sized it to three and a half by four and three quarters. And then I took my cut file. You could take any of these cut files, whatever size they come in, place them on the, the canvas, and then you're going to size it so that it fits on that blank. And this is how every single time you're going to have perfectly sized graphics for your, for whatever you're putting them on. Um, this is crucial. It seems very, very simple, but it is crucial, especially for objects that are like odd shapes and things like that. And sometimes what I'll do, for instance, if I had this charcuterie board and I wanted it to have like the exact dimensions and the curves and all of that stuff, then what I would do is take a picture of this right over top of it so that it's not distorted or just like, um, like you wouldn't want the picture, the camera to kind of be, uh, At an angled angle. yeah. the wrong way because the top would be wider or narrower yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Um, so I take a picture of this and then I import this picture into design space and, and size it to the exact size and then place cut files on that. So we, we do that a lot around here. Um, but as far as like this hat and this onesie, all I'm going to do is take my measuring tape and place it over 
like this and say, you know what, I probably don't want this graphic to be much more than four inches wide, maybe four and a half at the, the biggest. And for the hat, somewhere around the same, three and a half to four inches is as wide as I would want it. Um, and then for like a tumbler, our general rule of thumb is three, around three and a half inches, because if you get more than that, then it starts to curl around your cup and then you don't see the entire graphic. So just use your measuring tape. You definitely need a measuring tape. Everyone makes fun of me because I constantly have one, but we use it a lot. Um, so that's just some, some tips and tricks and hacks, but let's go over to design space and we will size these files really quick. I'm going to use this on the hat for Fallon and I'm going to use this file on the onesie for Chappy Do. So I wanted it four and a half inches wide. I'm just gonna come up to the top, type in 4.5 and then I wanted this to be right around four inches so I'll type in four. And then I'm going to cut this out of white. So let's change the color to white. And I'm gonna cut this out of orange. So let's change the color to orange. And the reason that I did that is I'm going to cut these together. Um, also, can you see right here where there are three different layers to this file? It's just how I made the file, I made it really quickly. Um, but I'm just going to weld that together so that it's one layer and it will all cut like it's supposed to. Now I'm gonna click make it. And you can see there's two separate mats. However, however, you know what? Do I dare do it? I'm gonna do it. We can, we can get this in one map. Let's move this object. Let's move it over here. And now what we're going to do is just rotate this like this, place it on the right side, all the way to the right side. And then I'm gonna put white on this side of the mat, orange on this side of the mat, and just cut with one mat. Because this is HTV, I do wanna make sure that I'm here. So now I'll actually have to put white here and orange here. Press continue. We're gonna to connect to our machine and we will select iron on as our material setting. Just a moment here. Now back up, Miss Glenda's here and she said, hi Rachel, hi Becca, I finally joined your membership a while back. I highly recommend it. I've missed hey. you ladies. Thank you. Hi, We're so Glenda. glad you're here with us. That's phenomenal. Um, yeah, so while I'm doing this, um, Rach, do you wanna tell them about our promotion that we've got going on today? Just today? Is it over today? No. Yeah, that's right. We um, are running a great sale today through Craft Month, which, by the way, ends after after March. That's it. April 1st, Craft, craft Month is, is gone. So to celebrate, we are running a sale. You can get $40 off your very first membership uh, of the year with us here at Oak and Lamb. And kind of like on top like piggybacking on that celebration we've also launched a cricket joy course which is why we're going absolutely nuts with cricket joy crafts yes today. Uh, we're launching that course it is over a dozen videos and it is exactly what you need if you happen to own a cricket joy or maybe you got one for black friday or maybe you got one uh for christmas and you just don't exactly know how to use it and you need some training you need some help that's what we're here to do we would love to do that for you uh that course is completely free with our membership along with over a thousand cut files with three free commercial use license licensing there's another free course in there we have a member only facebook group i mean if you if you need some crafty inspiration and education, this is the place to be. Absolutely. And you guys need to join. So I'm popping in a link that you can click in the comments. There's always a link in the description of the video itself. Uh, or if you're just, if you have a membership, if you if you know what you're doing with Cricut, but you uh, see some maybe supplies that you haven't purchased yet that you might like for your Cricut, I'll link all the supplies down below. You can use our links to Amazon. Yeah. My easy press turned itself off, so I'm gonna reheat it. And then I did just use the everyday iron on setting. I braid that down, shiny side down with the mirrored setting. I'm gonna go ahead and click go. And then we're just gonna be able to cut this out with one mat, which is one of my favorite Cricut acts. Especially when you're doing like cardstock with teeny tiny little pieces and you're gonna have like 10 different car or 10 different mats because you have 10 different colors. I love to be able to just put all of it on one and place my cardstock 
in the correct spots on the mat. So Missy said heart. she has a joy and has never used it. Use it. Back Use up. it. Why have you not used it? Back Let up. us know. Yeah. Missy. Tell us. Is it because you don't need it? Is it because you don't know how? Is it because you don't know what to, to make with it? Let me know. That's why we're here. That's why we made the course. Um, while that's cutting out, I'm going to go ahead and put my hat on this here. If you are making hats and do not have this handy dandy thing, this is really the only thing that I liked about the hat press is that it came with this. Got to be honest. But if you don't have that, you can use a towel, just like roll a towel up, fold it up, put it in here. Uh, this just creates a really good surface to press your vinyl onto hats. I mean, if you, if you do hats a lot, do, does Cricut sell that thing separately? I think so, up? but it's like $50 or something stupid if I remember correctly. Correct me if I'm wrong. That's terrible. Yeah. But I do, I do like that as I do well. too. I will admit that, Becca. Okay, so that went on really easily. I went ahead and lint rolled this so that it will go on good. This dried really well. It's cute. You I can't love see it. the tea though. I'm gonna go over the tea with a different color. Well, that's cutting. Look at that lighting. You're looking dark. My stomach always hits it. Oh, it's completely. <laughs> Is it in the floor? Oops. Glenda, absolutely yes. Use your scraps if you use the joy. Yeah, you don't have to have um, the joy specific materials at all. Uh -uh. Unless you're doing your smart vinyl, it's usually smartest to do that. Haha, <laughs> get the joke. But if you're just doing regular projects, just use whatever vinyl that you have. Agreed. Beth, I wonder if they'll discontinue the hat press at some point. I doubt it. As long as they're selling like one a month, they'll keep making them. They'll keep selling well, them. Well, they probably have a warehouse somewhere full of them, so they're just going to have to. I'm sure. Just like those $300 lamps. And, Rachel, I got to be honest. The lamp, to me, is not as troubling as, like, the bright pad. Look, look, that bright pad. You know? Aaliyah was here earlier. She knows how I feel about the bright pad. She does know. Trash. Okay, let's weed this guy here. Who likes weeding here? Rach, do you enjoy I weeding? weeding? I, I also like weeding. I do like weeding. I, I think like it's relaxing. It. I agree. I don't like weeding if I'm on some kind of time constraint or I'm rushing. Yeah. Um, but if I can just, you know, do things slow and steady, I do love to or weed. Or if it's tiny, tiny letters. I'm not a massive fan of that. Which we try and steer clear of those. Oh, absolutely. And that's the other thing. Like, as you craft, you'll learn what will cut well and what won't. Um, sometimes... It, it's just not doable, but that's why we love print and cut too. Um, because a lot of times you can do like a printable vinyl or something like that and still use the teeny tiny letters and kind of achieve the same effect. I'm going to grab this pen pen tool and this is going to be difficult to see because it is so tiny. Okay. Where's my little, I need my little silicone cup. This, I like this, Rachel. I just picked up all of these little pieces all and one on fell the tip swoop. of, yeah. Good. Penny said, I'm a bright pad owner. Maybe used it three times. It's now in the box under my craft table. Yeah. Case in point. Thank you for your review, yeah. Miss Penny. Garbage. Okay. Move this off. We'll place that down in a little bit. And cut this one. And no, I totally get that, of course, like a light tracing box for different things. But for Cricut... No, no, you don't need that, especially because we preach to weed on the mat because it's way easier. Yeah, I, I mean, I guess you could tape it down to it. But, but come on, I mean, you're creating more work for yourself. Yeah. Oh, Jenny, thank you so much. Yeah, so we think, it, let me go ahead and check for you guys if that, uh, what would we call it, a hat mold? A hat yeah, um, I don't know what you call it, but she's asking if it's sold separately. I, I, let me check. I'm almost positive it is. I don't know what it would be called, Rach. I mean, it's a, it's, it is a. It's showing just the hat press with the, um, a pressing form. Hat pressing, pressing form, form. Yes, that's what it's marketed as. But I'm only seeing it, um. 
sold with the hat press, which by the way, if you guys need it, uh, it's on sale for 99 bucks. Don't, you don't need it though. What did we pay for it? 150, I think. Did we? Okay, so these letters are tiny, 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 and the inside of my A is wanting to come up. So um, I'm grabbing some reverse tweezers just to help pull that up. Um, again, these are teeny tiny letters. I can't imagine weeding these with regular adhesive vinyl, but it's doing pretty well with um, the HGV. Another phenomenal question. Why is it that when I use Design Space on my phone or tablet, um, there aren't as many options as you get on a laptop or PC? That so is that's, a great question. That's just kind of, it's just like standard for when you're not able to use um, a laptop or PC, any mobile device that you have, you're going to have less options in Design Space. It's annoying. Yeah. Now there are, it, unless they switched it, you can't, you, curve you can't even use the um, knife blade. On and the a, reason be, that is because the cut times the are cut longer time and they're yeah. afraid that the Bluetooth connectivity like it, will glitch out yes. or something like that. Yeah. Um, but there are a couple of extra rules with the mobile version. Yeah. I would, again, I That's wish we cute. knew why. That's cute. Okay. So we're, I'm putting this one on the jerk or the onesie. Just going to grab this here. Place this right here. And you can use a press if you want to. I, in general, like a clamshell press for shirts and things like that with HTV because it just puts so much pressure on it that it kind of, it, <coughs> excuse me, it kind of pushes it more level. You can't feel like the edges of the heat transfer vinyl and stuff like that. So in general, that's my preference. I got to make this perfect or Anna won't put it on chat. Do we think that's too high? Let me see. No. Okay. Well, maybe a little I high. Forget how babies' heads are. I'd pull it down just a, just a okay. scooch. I know you probably had it perfect, but baby, you know babies. Well, they're chin. You know, they're chins. Chin. You know, there's yeah. lots of chins going yeah. on. That's cute. That's adorable. Okay. So just apply the heat here. I like to start in the middle, um, and then work myself. Or, out from that you're looking for and we talk about this in the cricket course as well you're looking for little bubbles to come up so that you know that the transfer has released from the vinyl now one thing that i like to do is get it to release and because i'm not using a press for this i always go back and put more heat like i'll remove this and then go back and put more heat now with more pressure and that's just because, like I said, I like for it to not feel like there's an edge to my vinyl, especially for a baby. You want shirts to be not like really stiff and um, hard. Wouldn't want that. And we have a good question. Lorraine says, I got some tech wrap vinyl and found out that I have the exact same vinyl from Cricut. Is this normal? Do companies sell uh, the same designs of vinyl? So and the answer is sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes they do. Now, Glenda said that tech wrap is supposed to have their own formula. Um, but again, some companies sell, you know, like I could get Orcal 651 from, oh gosh, probably hundreds of websites, honestly. It just depends. Okay. Now we're gonna put this on here. And what I try when I'm doing hats, I try to get a hat that doesn't have the seam up the, the middle because sometimes it just doesn't do well. Uh, but that's not completely unavoidable. Well, do you know what I love, Becca, and you're the one that did it, is doing a uh, leather patch on yes. it. Yes. I love yeah. that. So you guys can use fabric glue and you can hand cut it or cut it out with your Cricut. We love like one, four, three vinyls, faux leather, or really you can get faux leather anyway, or real leather, honestly, whatever you want. And just make like a square patch to put your HTV on. And then you could just put the patch on the hat. That's super cute. With this hat, it's particularly important to start in the middle of your graphic and then go out. If I started on this side, then it could have moved a little bit. And by the time I got over here, it would go uphill. So that's why I think it's important to start in the middle. And you can see here with this mini easy press, how well this is transferring over. No need at all for that hat press. And Logan, no, uh, Starcraft does not have smart vinyl. It, uh, smart vinyl as, as a whole is just a cricket owned, uh, 
you know, type of thing. Now well, you can but, get bigger. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say there are companies that are coming out with roles. Like Tech yeah. Wrap does have a role that you can put into the machine, if yeah. I remember correctly. Uh, and you can also cut it down if you want to yes. cut it down. Uh, Cricut Smart Materials, it's marketed as having like a really thick backing so it like mimics a mat without needing a mat. So do be careful about that. But we've done some tests, uh, smart vinyl versus regular vinyl, and it does cut fine. Yeah. I'm just going to apply a little bit more heat here. But you can see how well that transferred over. I'll, I did all this with the... Cute little Cricut Joy. All of it. So for those of you who are looking for things to do with it, I, there's tons of stuff to do with it. And in fact, I'm making a video next week of like 17 different projects that you can make with your Cricut Joy because there are so many things you can make with it. Look how cute. I love it. Look at this little I guy. love it. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Four projects in roughly an hour because we talked for a while. Oh yeah, we love to chit chat on these lines. Love it. Thank you all for being here with us today. Has anyone joined the membership today? Has Who all here has already gone through the Cricut Joy course? Because I know that we do have some members here who have already started the Cricut Joy course. Um, let us know. I also have some members who have been fighting the urge to buy a Joy, and I think the course has prompted them to do it. I'm told that you can buy the Cricut Joy for like $99 at some spots right now. So if you are wanting to dive into the Cricut industry, uh, the crafts, industry um and want to just do things like this $99 that's worth a gamble right Honestly. and then we're here to help you learn design space here to help you learn all the terminology here to help you learn all of the supplies that you need the tools that you need um so join our membership $40 off using the code crafty and join yeah. the amazing flock that we have here we yeah. love our community we Listen, love what we do if you join for the course you'll stay for the community yeah. like honestly our courses they're great we we've done cricket courses a lot so it's kind of like when we do these for oak and land they're kind of like perfected if that makes sense yes um but nothing can put a price on our community because we say this sometimes you can find cut files different places you can find um other people's education some places, but you're not going to find education like ours, and you are never going to find the community that we have elsewhere. Our community is 100% priceless, and it's all thanks to you guys. So, yeah, come for the come for the course if you want to, but you're going to stay for the amazing community. Yeah. Um, really quickly, HSN and Michaels both have the Cricut Joy and Joanne for $99. Wow. So grab that. I'm very sorry. My coffee is <laughs> talking back. Um, thank you all for being here. Thank you for coming on a Saturday. I have really enjoyed this. I always love breaking out the little Cricut Joy and making simple projects like this. I think a lot of times we try to overcomplicate projects because we've been doing this so long and we want advanced projects, but it's nice to go back to the simple things it for is. those of, for those of you who are watching and the simple things seem really complex to you because you've never done them before. So always excited to do that for you all. Always excited to answer questions and be here with you all. Thank you. Uh, we will be live next week on Tuesday and Thursday. Uh, Rachel's making some acrylic keychains with Cricut Joy. I am going to be making some Easter tag type things with Cricut Joy. Uh, we have that video coming out next week that's a pre-recorded video. 17 projects or 18, whatever I land on, that you can make with Cricut Joy. And then something else. I think it's a craft product haul that yes. you guys can get off of Amazon yes. something like that. We wanted it to be two, but I don't think it's coming in yet. So we may have to do the Timu craft haul for Cricut Joy yeah. a little bit later. But yeah, and also, lots of Cricut Joy coming up. For all you guys watching who don't have a Cricut Joy, the the fun thing for you is yeah. every Cricut Joy related project we make, every video we pop out is completely tailored to you as well. Every single thing that the Joy can do, your machine can do as well. So don't feel like you're left out if you don't have this little machine. You can make these too. Can you show us your card you made as well? Sure, 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 sure. This one right here, this is an Oak and Lamb cut file um, that is really cute. There's actually a member only video on this too um, that I made in my camper. So the, if, if you wanna watch one, probably watch the one from the course because if you're a member, you get both of them. Yeah. Uh, so watch that and then I made this one too just oh, with cute. fun, cute little font. Anna, did you see what I made, Chappie? She did. Yes, yeah, she said, who is that for? Chappie do. This is so cute. And guys, it, listen, it's completely free to subscribe and to like. So if you're watching this and you haven't already subscribed, we post content just about every day here on YouTube. We are super dedicated to 
to to grow in this thing to reach in everybody that we can possibly reach and, yep. and we do that by pumping out a lot of really great high quality content so make sure that you are subscribed that you have notifications turned on like the videos all of it helps us but the number one way to support what we do here at oak and lamb is to become a member and take advantage of the many many perks that we continue to pour into that amazing membership yep thank you all so much for being here i will see you all next week rachel will be here next week uh, maybe we could coax anna into coming next week <gasps> that'd be fun oh, yeah. we'll see have a fantastic day